This is Mommying While Muslim, recorded live and unedited. Watch as Zeba and Uzma record their podcast, see their reactions, and find out for yourself what all the buzz is about. Our trusted partner, Guidance Residential, the number one U.S. Islamic home financing provider, is offering an exciting Ramadan special. This Ramadan, take advantage of their home purchase savings program by following three easy steps. Learn how to do that when you experience the guidance difference and learn more at gr.link backslash Ramadan dash FB dash MWM dash MAR 23. Assalamu everyone. Welcome to another episode of Mommy While Muslim Podcast. I am flying solo today because it is Ramadan. We're one third of the way through and it is only going to get busier. So um, Zeba and I are having to divide and conquer while we continue our favorite thing series for the second month in a row because we have so many things we love and our vendors are so amazing and agreeing to come on and talk to you guys. And we want their businesses to grow during Ramadan. So please if you like them, if you're convinced of our favorite things, make them your favorite things as well. Um, we are getting closer to Eid, so you know you're going to need to fulfill those Eid gift lists and get those parties going on. And we're really excited because today we actually have our favorite edibles. That's the original title that I wanted, but Zeba said I couldn't do that because then people would think marijuana. So it's our favorite desserts. <laughs> For anybody who doesn't know what it is, uh, kanafa is a Palestinian dessert traditionally made with cheese. Our guests took it to the next level. This is a dessert that I would never touch because it had such a bad aftertaste. It's very bright orange, typically. And I was convinced that I was like being poisoned with the food coloring. And I just, it was just too bitter. And I never ate it. And then like very hesitatingly, I tried it at an event. And I was like, oh, this is going to suck. I'm going to have to spit it out. What a waste of my money. And then it was heaven in my mouth. And now I'm a believer in Kanafa because of Kanafa Queens, founded by Fatima Muhammad with her daughters, Ray- Rayana and Karima. And it has won county awards. It's won city awards. And it's been featured in the LA Times. There's so many people that we know who are both Muslim and non-Muslim who like swear by Kanafa Queens. So we're so excited to have her on here because she's a super busy lady cooking all the time in the kitchen, more kanafa because they're always being ordered. Mm-hmm. Welcome, Fatima. Assalamu Thank you so much for having me. What an honor. And I'm so happy that we got to make it work. I was like, yeah, how am I going to make this work in Ramadan? I literally, this is... It's insane. <laughs> even though this is the extra hour I thought I had, I was like, um, so, you know, I love your podcast when I... Oh, thank you. <laughs> ...join during Ramadan. I love what you guys do and empowering women through your guys' voices. Keep doing that. Thanks, babe. So we'd like to kick off the podcast by asking about your mommying story, anything you're comfortable sharing about your girls, especially your girls slash business partners, um, and your momming philosophy, how you're raising them. Oh, man. You know what? Honestly, I always tell everyone it's not just me. This sounds, you know, I'm sure a lot of people it takes a village I do not do it alone there's times where I'm like I have to call my sister and be like hey I need you to like put some sense into my daughter put some sense in it or I need your advice or you know my parents or friends you know how because we were a part of so honestly I'm not the type that beats myself up if something goes wrong I'm just like every day is a new day um just strive for excellence in my parenting if something goes wrong oh well at least I tried and then I just you know I I challenge myself the next day to be the best you know Muslim mama (laughs) but yeah I, I I really try to our dean is so beautiful and I just really try to be a good example of what Islam tells us how the Prophet ﷺ taught us how to be with our families. And I'm like, you know, you can't go wrong when you do that. I notice things go wrong when I'm not like, <laughs> you know, doing, you know, if I'm following psychology 101, I'm like, no, Islam is truly, it encompasses it all. And if we just use it as our guide, I feel like, subhanAllah, um, but yeah, I'm I'm all about I'm old fashioned in the sense of um, I know there's a lot of umbrella parenting nowadays, like where 
it's like, don't tell my son what to do. And like, you know, just every little step, it's like, no, don't do that. Don't, you know, and I'm all about, if you fall, that's fine. You know, I act like I, you know, I see it in, in the corner of my eye, but I don't make a big deal because I feel like we're, we're becoming so reactionary to everything. And we're, you know, just, I almost very dramatic in how we react. And I feel like I'm noticing a lot of very, very, and it's okay. I'm, I'm all about kids showing their emotions, talking about their feelings, but I feel like nowadays you cannot correct or guide or, or advise a kid without the mom or the kid getting really upset. And I don't do that method. I'm, I tell everyone you are more than welcome to guide, discipline my child, you know, please, if anything, that gives me ease to know that you care for my child as I do, you know, and um, so, yeah, so alhamdulillah, my, my group of support system that I have, whether it's my husband, my in-laws, you know, my parents, my sisters, my, you know, my, all my amazing Kanapa Queens family, I've had, you know, I've, I've, just so many people have helped me parent my kids. It's truly, I cannot give, give myself the credit. Oh, I love that. Like you said, it takes a village and I totally get what you're saying. It's like when people are correcting my children, obviously in a loving way, I would, you know, get upset if they did it harshly, but they do it way better than I would like way more lovingly than I would sometimes yeah. correct my children. And I'm like, that I know is coming from a place of true love and truly wanting the best for my children. And I so, so appreciate it. I'm so glad that you brought that up because there are so many moms who get like forever, like they cut you off if you ever correct oh. their kid. And it's like, you're like canceled. And it's like, That's but and I, you know, it's crazy. Painful because I'm like, I like it like that, but I know not all parents. So sometimes I try to, you know, grasp like, Hey, are you the type? Like, you like your, you know, kids to get advice from other people, or you, you know, and so I, I try to gauge that, but I'm not going to lie. My close circle of friends are the ones who have similar parenting styles because I, it just, it's easier and more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I, I do definitely respect everyone's parent style. That's just, I'm just telling you what I'm most comfortable with. I'm all about everyone help me parent because I'm still figuring this out. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. Like it, the whole Masjid family has raised my children oh, because oh. I frequently forget them. Like the other day at Tarawi, I forgot my daughter. We like got back into the car and my husband was like, where is she? <laughs> I was like, go back inside, go find her. <laughs> there go. And you how know? beautiful is that? You know, and you didn't yeah. panic, you did it. And nope. people are like, oh my God, I noticed like when something happens, you're not you don't overreact. I'm like, why? I feel like we've, it's, it's unfortunate. We've come to that, you know, where I'm just, I just feel like everyone's in, in such a super anxious, anxious <laughs> stage. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. no, don't do that to yourself. So if people ask me for my advice and what works, I'm like, this is how I do it. And they're like, what really <laughs> and yeah I'm like no and I'm not about this western way of you know raising kids which is me myself and I you know it's I could do it all by myself no that's absolutely not um the prophetic that's way, not how it's supposed the to be Islamic mm -hmm. way Islam's all about community it's all about family it's all about you know togetherness so um that's pretty much what I'm trying to, you know, I wanted that to evolve through my business. So even in Kanapa Queens, I'm all about that unity. You are absolutely. <laughs> this girl's like everywhere, like bringing people together with her I Kanapa. Like seriously, it is like such a unifying experience. But before we get into that, why don't we talk a little bit about your family background and how that kind of set you up for this, like love of cooking, love of your culture, love of entrepreneurship. To be honest, I grew up in a big fat Palestinian family. You watch my big fat Greek wedding. So that's literally my family, except Palestinian. And I would not trade it for the world. My childhood, it reminds me of so many people at the dinner table. 
you know, no, no appointments having to be made a week prior for someone to just knock on your door and come over for dinner. And I, and you don't realize how much of your childhood just it really grows with you as you get older. Cause I was like, I'm not going to do this, you know? And, and then you realize, oh my God, that was beautiful, you know? And our home was like a safe haven for so many people. I remember growing up, it was like the United Nations. Our neighbors <laughs> would literally call us. We, were, we grew up in an all white neighborhood and they would be like, there's a black person that pulled up and we're like, yeah, that's our friend. Oh my God. There's a Muslim family. We're like, you know, we're Muslim. <laughs> but it was like, no, you guys are, ex you guys are the exception to being good Muslims. And, mm. and it was always, thank God my parents were just, you know, such good examples of what Islam is. And they taught us everyone is equal. My husband's African-American and everyone asks me, how did you marry him? And I'm like, my parents did not blink. You know, they just, uh, oh, the on, only man. thing they said is, how was his salah? How was his character? How was his deen? And that, they didn't care about his job. They didn't care about ethnicity. They didn't, none of that. And um, so honestly, it was, that's the kind of childhood I had. I just remember lots of beautiful gatherings, what the weekends, my parents' day off was always at either their house or a park. It was always community-based. It was, I don't ever remember us going through Ramadan or Eid or just any, you know, weekend where it was just us, you know, and, you know, it was always, always had to revolve around community, family, and yeah, and, and I'm so fortunate for that. Yeah, it sounds like a beautiful upbringing. And like, I know, like our non-Muslim audience, because now we're like 50-50 non-Muslim Muslim, Muslim awesome. listeners, their minds are, alhamdulillah, and their minds are blowing because it's like, that sounds terrible <laughs> where your weekends are so busy. But it, you know, for somebody who had a similar experience later on, I didn't, it wasn't from like inception for me, more like once I was a teenager, I had a lot of extended family. And it was just fun, you know, because you always felt safe. You always felt loved. And then on top of that, you had a lot of role models. So do you want to talk about some of those role models that you saw who inspired you to do what you do today? You know, my role models were honestly my parents, first and foremost, my grandma, Allah um, Yerhama, she passed away. My grandma, Maryam, mm -hmm. she raised my grandpa, died when my dad my dad is the eldest of the siblings, is it nine or 10. I, I lost count, but it's like. Mashallah. <laughs> Everybody loses dad, count. <laughs> After like four, it doesn't matter. <laughs> my dad was the eldest, 10 or 11. And, and my grandma was pregnant when my grandpa died. And mm -hmm. she raised, she was such a resilient, strong woman. And I have yet to see any of my uncles or aunts ever like fight or like stop talking to each other oh, when up. people vent to me about their aunts and uncles i'm like really i just can never relate because my grandma her biggest thing is is again like togetherness and keeping a community and she would i remember it was cute we were like best friends like she would vent to me about something that was bothering her and i'm like why don't you just tell them She's like, well, I'm afraid if I tell them, it might make them mad and it might make that person, it might push, you know, like people away from each other. And she always looked at the bigger picture. Like I'd rather, you know, just carry that with me and just be okay with it and, and forgive them then. And I was just like, wow. And that's the kind of people, same thing with my mom. She would tell me, never waste your time on on the phone backbiting or gossiping always if you're if you if you're going to get on a call with a friend or family make sure your intentions are for good and it these things you know we're human like every now and then I slip I'm not perfect at all but it is always in the back of my head like you know what are you doing to better someone what are you doing to you know how what you know what am I doing for whether it's even to be honest, strangers, my mom and dad would always say, make dua for the even people who you know have maybe hurt you or harmed you, make dua for them. And that's literally wow. 
I have never seen my parents get in an argument with anyone or have anyone who stopped talking to them. And, you know, and alhamdulillah, so now I'm the type that if someone doesn't get along with their sibling, especially if it's a petty reason, I just cannot get too close. I keep a distance because I'm like, okay, you know, I'm. It might be contagious. I'm all about family and. You know, again, nobody's perfect, you know, and there's exceptions. I, you know, I've had people tell me their sibling did, I mean, crazy stuff. And to me, it's healthier to, to create a huge distance than, you know, trying hard to make it work. But, you know, um, I feel like we're also, you know, we're, we're getting more comfortable with pushing away from family. Again, like what, what I was saying earlier, it's all about how can I better myself? And that's it. Like nobody's looking at um, the community. And, and that's why we're in a state where people are, you know, depression is at its highest rate. Remember, yep. kids are, you mm-hmm. know, it's the mental health um, crisis is just out of control. And I truly, truly believe this is, again, this is my theory. It's because there is no community. People are lonely. People are, you know, and, and, and that's not healthy. Our, we're social beings. We're made to socialize. We're made to be, we're, we're not. And I even feel like the word introvert, I'm like not crazy about that word because people get too comfortable with, you know, making excuses for why they don't like to see people. And I'm like, no, that's not, you know, again, we're, humans were made to socialize. Yeah. Whether there's personality differences, like I'm more, um, maybe like, you know, I don't know, uh, you know, more like bubbly or or gregarious, mashallah. That's how you describe you. (laughs) You know, quiet. That's not talking about that, but I'm saying when people use a term to make excuses for not wanting to be a part of, you know, a community or their family. And again, you know, everyone knows their situation better. I know people who have had trauma in their families. I'm not, uh, those are the exception. I absolutely, you know, would tell someone, yes, please, you know, get away from that situation, but create your own community. You know, we, we get to choose, you know, I, I've met so many, alhamdulillah for my amazing, I, I get to say that I'm fortunate for my family, but for the ones who are not family that you get to like hand pick. And, you know, those are even to me, just like family, you know, those are, you know, I, I, so yeah, that's, that's the. Perfect. So I alluded earlier to how I couldn't eat Kanafa before I met Kanafa <laughs> Queens. Is this like a family recipe or like something that you developed? Like, tell us where this recipe comes from. You don't have to tell us recipe, how to make it. Just... Definitely. My mom, I learned watching my mom growing up. I was just, you know, those little, you know how they say I'm um, the little kid who's in a candy shop. Every time my mom grabbed oh. all her ingredients to make kanafa, I was that kid. I was just like, it was like Eid. Every time my mom made kanafa, it was it felt like Eid for me. And I think a lot of it, when I look back, I just remember kanafa wasn't just made just because it was always, you know, bringing people together to celebrate happy news, to, you know, to give to a neighbor, to cheer someone up. It was always, you know, around something beautiful and inspiring and you know, and so, so it was always, I gravitated to it. My mom was like, you would never, like, I always was right there when she was spreading the dough or, she, you know, you know, making the cheese or melting the butter. I literally watched her like a hawk. <laughs> like I, so that's yeah, why it's so good. You know, my mom learned from her mom, her, her mom. So it's like, I, I'm super wow. excited. I was one, one of the her children who just want to, you know, who, it was a passion for me to like make it and share it with others. I never saw it being a business. I'll be honest with you. This happened very organically. Yeah. That's what I wanted to know. How do you go from like this beautiful recipe, knowing that I have this like wonderful thing that's a part of my history. 
How do you make a business out of that? Like how, what, what are the steps that go into it? It was God. I mean, it was absolutely, I'm, I'm really good at so many different things. Like I love, I used to go on business trips with my dad when I was like five or six, like I would go with them to his store. And in in fact, I, I was telling him the other day, I remember you dropped me off at one of your stores and you had me take over. And I was asking me and my sisters were like, I was probably nine. My other sister was ten, wow. and we ran the dang thing. He didn't. We didn't have phones at that time. Nothing. I remember security passing by, and he was like, he he was like, hmm, they look young, but they look like they know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the security guard. <laughs> I just That's awesome. It's crazy. I feel like um, I didn't. Because people tell me, do you have a business degree? I'm like, no, I just have the business degree of life, you know, and watching my parents, I have aunts and uncles, my my parents, my brother, my sisters or everyone, all this, you know, amazing entrepreneurs. And I tell people, if you want to learn business, watch someone that you love and just take lessons from them because I've seen people with business degrees and they come to me for advice. And I'm like, what? Shouldn't I come to you? But (laughs) I'm honored. I'm always so happy to share any knowledge that I have that works for me. And I feel like, um, in fact, yesterday, a really, really famous coffee shop called me and they wanted advice from me. And I'm like, and they were like, oh my God, they were literally jotting down notes and like, hold on, can you say that again? And it it's truly, I'm like, I, again, Allah kept um, showing me ways. So yeah, I would, um, we started a clothing, you know, Hilwa, my sister is the CEO, Ghadir. I don't know if you met Ghadir, shop Hilwa. So that's still around. Um, we have... You know, and anyway, so I was doing that. I'm a psychology major, actually. I don't know if you know that. No, and I, I would that. always make kanafa just as a hobby for, you know, potlucks, for friends, for my halakas, for family gatherings. And at one point, I'm like, okay, I'm doing too much. And I just want to, like, focus on what, like, I'm just going to ask Allah for guidance and like what he, to push me towards what he thinks is best for me. And I kid you not, it was one sign after the other. People, random people would tell me, I had a dream about you at grocery stores. And I'm like, really? Or people who, same people that would always try my (laughs) kanafa were now not only telling me how good my kanafa is, but they're like, Fatima, you should sell your kanafa. And at the same time, my daughter, Diana, who was 10 at the time, learned the recipe from A to Z. She was like, why don't wow. we sell this? The whole world loves it. And I'm like, and, and again, these signs would go from one ear to the other. But it wasn't until this is what like did it for me was um, I had in my, I was in labor with my last son. And I said, Allah, you know, and they say every, you know, dua is answered during your labor. And I swear Mm -hmm. after that delivery, like it was just nonstop. One of my friends, Amani called me, she's like, Hey, can I, can I put in an order of Kanafa? And I'm like, an order, I'll make it for you, but I'm not selling it. (laughs) My best friend, Amrana, she was like, you know, can I place an order for my daughter, Zakika? And another, you know, really good friend. It was just literally nonstop. So many friends, so many family members were like, and I'm like, okay, that's crazy. Like everyone's tried my kanafa, but now it was like, it was clear signs. And especially when Amani had, you know, placed that order and it was from there. It was like, mm-hmm. people were like, hey, I heard you saw kanafa. And I'm like, I don't, but. It literally, it just, it was just, it happened so organic, you know, subhanAllah, I I cannot tell you, it was one of those things where when Allah's talking to you, listen to those signs, you know, sometimes we have the answers right in front of us, but we ignore it. 
And I was like, I cannot ignore it. It just got to the point where it was clear Allah's showing me. And I was like, oh my God, I made to out for this. And Allah's showing me that this is meant for me. And one thing everyone would always tell me growing up, you have a gift with socializing and bringing people together. And when we finally, when I realized, okay, I told my daughter, if we're really going to sell this, we have to have a purpose. And otherwise I will not, it, it, the passion won't, it'll die. You know what I mean? And I was like, I'm driven by like purpose. So that's where we came up with our slogan, serving royal happiness and unity with everybody. <laughs> I was sitting with oh. my friend Amran, Amran watching this. Um, I was <clears throat> in her parents' kitchen and we were just, you know, I was like, oh man, I want it. I was kind of explaining the idea and what I want my slogan. And we just kind of, that that was like, okay, this is perfect. And from there, it was history. Like I'm just driven every morning I wake up with that purpose. Like who else are we going to be able to inspire today through our Kanafa? Who are we going to bring together? You know, how many families that I've had people who like told me I was going to, you know, we were me and my wife were going through a divorce and I gifted her kanafa through the process and it literally got us to, you know, yeah. I love I that. <laughs> I've had people. Don't tell the divorce yeah, lawyers this, they'll hate you. <laughs> we never talked to each other who I was like, have you, you know, tried gifting them something? Like, you can gift them a cupcake and literally they'd be like, oh, guess what? We're in talking terms. Like my best friend, years that I lost, Mashallah. like that I thought I was n never going to get back. Either talking to me and we're closer than ever. And so those are the kind of things I strive for every day. And, and I, it's beautiful. Honestly, it's just, it makes me, you know, just thinking of, it, I it makes me so emotional. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. People can't like see it on audio, but like we're both like grinning ear to ear because it's like we understand what this kanafa does. You know, it is. It's like freaking magic. I don't know if it's the cheese. I don't know if it's, it's the syrup. I have no idea. It, or the it, fact that it's so tiny and like the perfect size. It, you know, that's another thing where I just remember my mom. She never, the, her her way of making it. She never like shortcut the process. Like. You know, sometimes I'm like, okay, you're making it for so many people. Should I get a cheaper butter? Should I get? No, we're going to make it just the way I love it. That's how I want it for everyone else. It, it was oh, just wow. made with so much love. Like, so you know, I, I tell people it's, it's truly, I, I know it's good. Like, alhamdulillah, the, the knaf is so good, but I think it's that in Arabic, they say, you know, in nifas, like, you know, the, it's so hard to translate this and, and, and make it, you know, uh, to do it, do justice. it justice, but yeah, yeah, pretty much it's when something made is made with love, you taste that love. And people tell me, they're like, Fatima, I, I literally just had a piece of your kanafa and I felt like someone was giving me a hug. I was like, really? They're like, I swear, <laughs> like, it was like the biggest hug that I needed. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, you know, subhanAllah. So yeah. We um, love it. We love it. Alhamdulillah. So you have this like family recipe, historical recipe. You've made some changes to it by like, you do like the Nutella one. You do yeah, like all kinds of crazy I, like uh, mixtures, like was, flavors uh, of kanaf My parents, pumpkin. they're like blasphemy. That was like <laughs> so... That was like the first time I felt like I, you know, disobeyed my mom. And I was like, oh my God, how am I going to tell her? And my dad, I had a chocolate the to the and my dad hears me tell people, okay, which flavor? He's like, original. Best original. <laughs> Best, Best, there's original. only one canapa. No. And but you like revolutionized it, I think, in that way. And now you're in stores. So like, what's the future, mashallah? What's the future of Kanafa Queens? Where do you see yourself scaling up? Because like, I feel like the world is your oyster. 
the future for Kanafa Queens is obviously I I literally just let Allah guide me. I hope to see our message being, you know, from just worldwide. You know, my kids actually told me recently, Mama, I want to see us in Dubai. I want to see us here. And um, we've actually had people take it to Dubai and people try and, and they're like, oh, my God, we want to, you know, bring it here. And people in Jordan who took it for family in Jordan, they're like, this is better than all that can, you know, so we're just gonna right now we're in some grocery stores and some coffee shops um you know and we ship obviously you know um all over the u.s alhamdulillah so we're just kind of rolling with the punches you know we're 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 just gonna trust and let allah guide us and we're gonna roll with the so we can't wait for the next podcast to give you guys all an update <laughs> inshallah inshallah but, may allah know, bless your hands bless your kitchen us, bless the whoever's kanapa. listening help us spread our message <clears throat> of peace and love and unity and happiness through every bite and you know just if you're sharing the kanapa with someone just share the message that we ultimately you know that's the reason behind you know, Kanapa Queens. Absolutely. Well, we love it. We can't wait to put in our Eid orders. Um, I know there was one Ramadan where you weren't taking orders in Ramadan. And I was so devastated. I don't know yes. if I harassed you online and I was like, Everyone you have to send them to me. <laughs> I mean, this one lady sent us, how could this be? And I was just like, oh my God, I'm sorry. I was like dealing with a lot I'm of outraged. Is, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> Yeah, so hopefully, so yeah, this year we kept it open and everyone's so excited. It's been uh, totally, totally. So yeah. Yeah. And for anybody who's ordering online, um, just know that you do have to make the simple syrup on your own. And Fatima includes a stupid, simple, you can't mess it up recipe in there. So you make your simple <laughs> syrup because we know that kanafa is baked and then you put the simple syrup yes, on top. Yeah. Ah. It is perfect. Perfect. Absolutely so, perfect. Chef. <laughs> in honor of our favorite things uh, series that is continuing this month in April, Fatima, tell us what you are giving away to one lucky listener. Honestly, what do you want to give away, Uzma? Um, I know that it probably needs to be something that's shippable. Okay. So, so like, either one pie or six cupcakes, you you get to do something. Let's do the six cupcakes because I feel like that's like perfect that's and a mom can eat one perfect. and feel like, oh, I have five more for myself <laughs> later. <laughs> that's how I, I love do it. Your that's why we're friends as mom. I know, because my kids are like, can I have one? I'm like, no, I will break your fingers. These are mine. I love <laughs> One tray for you guys, one tray for I Mama. I love that. So um, what is the code word that our listener is going to email back to us at salam at mommywamuslim.com, and we can pass on to you their information, so then you can ship it to them directly. They can just honestly email us or DM us, or I could even give you my number. Um, if they reach out to you, the winner, then have them yeah we're asking them to reach out to us but with the code word that you've selected oh that means they have to listen to the episode and like you know return with the code word um mommy while kanafa <laughs> mommy while kanafa yeah. i love it yeah we've had some people like try to cheat the system and be like oh like give us the guest name and it's like no, you didn't listen. <laughs> oh, I love uh, you. Mommy Wakinafa. This was so awesome. the first person. I know. This was amazing. Thank you so much for doing this during Ramadan. We typically close out with the rapid fire, but I feel like you've been such an open book and have shared so much of yourself with us and do it through your cooking all the time. We will have you back when you are in would, Dubai, inshallah. Uh, <laughs> Kanafa <Allah>. Queens. <laughs> I'll be in Palestine this um, summer. Oh, mashallah. I have not updated my followers. So this is actually top secret. I'll be doing a Kanafa tour there. Oh, girl. Yeah, I just I just released top secret stuff. That's amazing. You heard it here first, everybody. And not, <laughs> I don't think anybody knows besides my parents and siblings, you know, but that's amazing. So I'm happy. Well, all of our friends who are going to Philistine this summer, that inshallah will be following you and yeah. your Kanafa tour. I cannot wait to share my story along with you guys and take you guys with me to Palestine. Uh, you know, my parents home country and it's a home to everyone honestly if 
it's it's the second holiest place in the world. So how I feel like everyone feels a connection. You don't have to be Palestinian. We're all Palestinian, subhanAllah. Yeah, I wear a lot of Palestinian gear and people ask me, they're like, you don't look Palestinian. I'm like, we're all Palestinian, man. There you go. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for coming on. We love you, Ramadan Kareem. And if we don't see you before, Eid Mubarak, Jazakallah Khair. Our trusted partner, Guidance Residential, the number one U.S. Islamic home financing provider, is offering an exciting Ramadan special. This Ramadan, take advantage of their home purchase savings program by following three easy steps. Learn how to do that when you experience the guidance difference and learn more at gr.link backslash Ramadan dash FB dash MWM dash MAR 23.